I made a video covering Evan Wright's playstyle and how it made playing as a pacifist in a very violent game really satisfying. However, throughout both games there are actually a lot of pacifist moments and I want to cover them. Let's start with Hotline Miami 1. The very first moment of pacifism is when the girlfriend begs for death and Jacket refuses. Instead, he takes her to his place. After genociding the police station and offering the police chief, Jacket confronts Richard, the man who killed his girlfriend. In this moment, the player has the choice to kill or spare him. Mind you, Richard is alive in Hotline Miami 2, so in canon, he was spared. While I was playing as the biker in the phone company, you can spare all of the employees, apart from the boss, because he has to be gutted. Interestingly though, from Jacket's point of view, Biker kills everyone in the company. Lastly, when Biker confronts the cleaners, the player again has the choice to spare them or kill them. And mind you again, in Hotline Miami 2, they're alive, meaning in canon, Biker spares the cleaners if he ever met them in the first place. Before moving on to the second game, I want to mention that the characters that are spared all have unique death animations or sprites when killed. The girlfriend has a unique death face sprite, Richard is choked to death, and the cleaners have really gory death animations. Arriving at Hotline Miami 2, in Jake's first level, the player can spare the editor. In addition, the editor bribes Jake with money. Something I love about this scene is that knowing Jake's character, you should arguably make the case he would either kill or spare the editor. On one hand, he rescued the editor from the Russian Mafia takeover. On the other hand, Jake might be so racist that even dealing with Russians deserves death. Little details, I love it. In the henchman's only level, he spares Andy, the owner of the chop shop. This act of kindness in the world of the horrible leads to his own death. Andy knew the fans and told them what happened, sealing the henchman's fate. Finally, we have Tony. When the fans clear out the area and execute the henchman, Tony just stands there and watches, refusing to take part in it. In my opinion, this is where Tony is starting to have thoughts of wanting to quit killing and the so-called action is no longer fun. Like the previous game, the editor, the henchman and Tony have unique death animations. The editor is shot in his chair, henchman gets brutally executed and while Tony surrenders, he gets killed by Manny Pado. And that's it. For a game that's very violent, there's quite a bit of pacifism in it. Hmm, maybe the game has an anti-violent message or something. I don't know. What do you Victim19s think about all of this? Let me know.